The best way I can describe it is it's Spy Family, but better. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to watch a lot of anime, read a lot of manga, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Wahila Superfina. And I'm your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. Today, for this pot episode, we are going to talk about Buddy Daddies. Mm -hmm. Mikhail, tell them what it is about. Okay, so Buddy Daddies is basically a show that has two assassins. Um, Their names are... uh, I can't tell off the top. It's... uh, yeah, I don't know what their names are right now. So it's <laughs> Kazuki Kurusu and uh, Rei Sua. And uh, basically, they are very highly trained assassins who end up taking on a case to kill this one guy, uh, Esushi uh, Hayami. And they end up taking in his illegitimate daughter, Miri Unasaki, and it is the most hilarious buddy cop slice of life and intrigue and mystery, murder mystery type of show. So basically, the best way I can describe it is it's spy family, but better. <laughs> That's how I would put it. So I saw the intro, the trailer for this anime. And I couldn't really tell what this story was about. I just knew it was about these two operatives who took in a girl. And it was, I was thinking about three men and the baby. And oh, then, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and then I was like thinking, okay, are these two guys, is this BL, boy love? So I was like, I'm interested. I, I'm going to put this on my watch list. <laughs> What's the term for you people that like BL? Fujoshi. Fujoshi? Yeah, because she's totally a Fujoshi. <laughs> and so I haven't watched it yet, but I put it on the watch list. And then it turns out that you watched it before me. <laughs> and then you tell me, yo, this is so fun. You got to watch this. I'm like, oh, yay. If it. If it gets your approval, it must be really good because <laughs> you're picky. <laughs> so the okay, so like we watched a. Uh, I'm a fan of the YouTuber Glass Reflection, and so he did like the new anime of the year or of the season, and like when he talked about Buddy Daddies, he wrote it off. Like, oh yeah, he, he completely mm-hmm. wrote it off like it wasn't anything special. The char- main characters are horrible people, and he kind of like. It may seem like there was nothing going on in the first episode. We watched the first episode. Well, I watched it. I binged through it <laughs> to, did. I think, uh, first three or four episodes. And I was like, yo, this is really freaking good. This is Spy Family, but funnier and better, better paced. And I don't see anyone talking about this show. So I really loved it. And I was like, I, I think I sent you um, a text with like, the 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 graphic for the show mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i was like oh my god it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so good <laughs> <laughs> so i think why we liked uh why we like buddy daddies more than spy family is because so the two i guess main characters the assassins they mm, they kind of view their work as dark, and then all of a sudden, this girl comes along, and well, one does. One yeah, does. yeah, and all of a sudden, Mary comes along, and the way they take care of her is realistic. While in Spy Family, it's more like a comedy because the male lead is trying to do a spy operation while looking like he's a normal family. <laughs> and then the wife's an assassin. Yeah, so there's like just a lot of comedy factors with Spy Family while Buddy it- Daddies showcases the real humor of parenting. <laughs> and then just put a dash of... Being a parent interfering with your dark work. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, because uh, what I've noticed is some people try to compare Miri to Anya from Spy Family, and I'm like, they're very different characters. Mm-hmm. Like, they're they're not at all. Like, you're, you're not going to get Spy Family type characters in this. You just are going to get the same premise mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. we do this. This is our work. This is blood. This is wet work. Mm-hmm. But we got to have a public image to uphold and so you got the the two characters so kazuki uh, kurusu and uh, reisua so kazuki is your what's the best way to describe him because he's like the he's usually he's the typical peppy character of the duo and he kind of showcases a lot of humor and I guess clumsiness to make him seem human and such. And you got Ray, who's like the polar opposite. He's, he's kind of like robotic. Dead, he's, like the, he's got like a RBF. <laughs> Kazuki's kind of like um, the guy who plays. Uh, he's like Ryan. Um, what's his name? The guy who does Deadpool. Oh yes, 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 yes. Ryan something. Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. He's like Ryan Reynolds. And then you've got Ray, who's like. The RB, he's got a really bad RBF, socially very awkward. Yeah. He's um He's a shut in. He's a shut in. Like he's basically a neat. <laughs> he's a big gamer. And it's is like they are so opposite. It made me think of like lethal weapon. Like oh, I, yeah. I'm like going back to like when we used to have like you know, the, the buddy cop thing. And the whole dynamics, one super strict while the other one's like, you know, sometimes we gotta cut corners. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm waiting to, like, if Mary gets older, if it's gonna go, like, bad boys. Oh. Right. So, it, it's, it's really, like, the dynamic of the two characters is so funny. And then, like, as you see them having to be parents Mm -hmm. like you know Mm -hmm. and that's that is legitimately what separates it from spy family because we're parents and a lot of the situations that they get into like we see in ourselves like like okay she needs to go to daycare yeah she's constantly getting into things right yeah, so there's this part of the anime where they need to somehow have Miri be watched during the daytime so they can work, and then they learn about daycare. And <laughs> they're trying to find a daycare, and then they try to get qualified to even put her into a daycare. And yeah, that's, that's real. That actually happens. <laughs> and then... They have to get all her school supplies, everything that's required for the preschool. And it's like, yep, you have to do that too. And the part where they get all of her clothes and such, they're buying like super expensive ones, name brand. And Kazuki is telling Mary, don't get this dirty. This was really expensive. And... Uh, that she markers it. <laughs> she markers it. She she writes her name on. It. He's like, no, no. Because, and, and the reason that even happens because like Ray was writing, and he looked at her, and he's like, here, go do whatever you want. And then she goes and she like, yeah, and she does it. She did it with such excitement. She's like, look what I can do. And Kazi's like, that was really nice, but. Why was it on an expensive clothing? <laughs> and Ray's like, what, that was bad? <laughs> and like when they go to the school, they end up being like, uh, they, they go there looking like Yakuza. Yeah. You know, and then like, yeah, it's so funny because like when they're, they're talking to like the, the teacher and then you see the other moms. They're like, they pull up their phones, they start texting each yeah, other in their like group chat. Group text. <laughs> they're like, did he say hit, man? Oh, he can. <laughs> I like to get hit from that. <laughs> <laughs> he can hit my husband. 
<laughs> but anyways, so the point was, then he learns that Mira wasn't really playing with the other kids because her clothes are so nice. And then he asks, well, I don't know where to get normal clothes that is okay to get dirty. And the teacher tells him where. And they go to, like, this, what is it, department store where everything was, like... It's like a... a like, four bucks. It was, it was, like a Don Quixote. Yeah, it's like yeah. a Don Quixote or Maracay. Like, it, it reminded me of a dollar store, but it was... a. 348 yen store or something like that. Anyways, everything was super cheap and they're like, oh my gosh, where has this been in my life? How come no one has told us about it? And as parents, once you find a spot that has like cheap things, you're like, oh my gosh, where has this been? We could have bought all this stuff for this price and save money. <laughs> Because you think like that. You think, okay, I bought this one thing for like 10 bucks. If I had just gone to this other store, I could have gotten ten of those for ten bucks. That was like when we went to uh, the what was it, the Savers place? Yeah, yeah my mom. Because we normally shop for stuff for our daughter. Uh, where like, like Target, Target, Walmart, Walmart, you know, Ross. Yeah, and then when we went to like Savers. And then we bought her like a crap ton of toys and clothes and stuff. You were like, "It was so cheap." I was like, "Yeah, no more new toys." <laughs> <laughs> so like, in okay, so that's the other thing when it comes to like the character Miri. If you compare her to Anya again, they're very different. Anya is the comic relief. Yes, yeah, she's she's definitely for comic with her facial expressions. Yeah, but the thing is, Miri is that too, because she's got facial expressions and mannerisms. The difference is, Miri is very much a three to four, a four year old child. Yeah, she yeah. is fully that. Whereas like, um, Anya, she's kind of dumb. But she can read minds. Yeah. And she's trying to, like, put on a facade. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Miri is the foil to <laughs> Kazuki, Akazuki, and Rei. It's, so there's this episode where she does a, I need to use the bathroom. And then she says the toilet is too high. So following with that episode... They're trying to do a job, and for some reason, she wants to go with them, or she has to go with them, and she has to use the bathroom. Kazuki tells her to hold it in, and she ends up not being able to hold it in, knocks on the enemy's door, asking to use the bathroom, and she doesn't know better. She's just a four-year-old, and she needs to go potty. <laughs> and he's like, who are you? The, guy, the guard's like, who are you? She's like, I gotta go potty, and he's like... Okay, and then, like, as uh, Kazuki, he's, like, uh, in uniform or, or whatever, he disguise. He looks like a security maintenance. Yeah, and so, choice. like, he's, like, sneaking around an area. And then, like, Miri and the guard come down, and she turns and looks at him, and he's, like, don't say anything. And she's, like, Papa! I found you, because they were playing hide-and-seek earlier. <laughs> And they're like, you know this kid? He's like, no. She's like, Papa. It's like, yeah. Mm-mm, you can't. You can't play this off, yo. <laughs> it's, it's a it leads to a shootout, and it's so funny because before that whole thing went down, Kazuki was talking with Ray about how they're gonna approach that situation, and uh, Ray's like, just go ahead, guns blazing. And Kazuki wanted to be sneaky. He wanted to go covert. Yeah. And then it ends up that Ray just goes guns blazing because the plan had to go there. And Ray's like, I told you we should have gone with this. This should have been plan A. <laughs> and so there's that's their dynamic. And it's just kind of wholesome, too, with the episodes, especially when you get to know the characters. Like, it turns out that Kazuki... Uh, had an ex-wife and they're expecting a child and uh, he kind of sees Mary as that child that he doesn't get to spend time with and but you don't know what happened to the kid you know he was expecting a kid but you don't know so there's that mystery there 
And then you got Ray, who seems like he never had a childhood. And whatever Mary reacts to, he kind of reacts to it similarly. So that's how much of a childhood he's missing. Wasn't it interesting, the episode where he finally said, I'm her papa. Yeah, that was so cool. And so... In that episode where he says, I'm your papa, he was remembering how his dad was, and his dad was just shitty. Yeah. He was trying to train his own child to be a killing machine, so there is no uh, paternal relationship there. It was more like a boss and an employee. Yeah. So we see a little bit of Ray's story. We know there's definitely more to it, because it seems like there is an organization involved. So with these two people with trauma, here comes this cute, bubbly child who doesn't know better and can only just say sorry and laugh. <laughs> and she calls both of these men her papa. Yeah. And when people say, oh, you have two fathers? How's that? She says, I love it. <laughs> And the interesting thing to to add to this dynamic of Kazuki, Rei, and Miri is uh, Kiyotaru, who's their handle uh, or handler. And he's kind of introduced as like a no-nonsense type of character. Yeah. And then, you know, you realize that the two of them are afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And then, like, when he meets Miri... You're thinking, oh, crap, this is going to go, like, south. But then he has a soft spot for her. Yeah. So, Kyutaro knows. Let's call him Q for short. That's what they call him. Uh, Q, he knows. He pretty much knows the backstory of Kazuki and Rei. And he surprises us by saying that he thinks that Mary is good for them. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of kind of like teasing us that, ooh, there is something to their story. What happened? And it kind of just gives you some anticipation that more of their backstory is going to be revealed. Yeah. And then, speaking even of backstory. Him, even him, like, what's his story? Yeah. So speaking of backstory, Miri's mom... Oh, Misaki, yeah. Yeah, so it seems like Masaki, Misaki met Miri's dad. They fooled around. She got pregnant. He left her. And so Misaki keeps the child, works as a singer at this bar. She has like a deadbeat boyfriend who bosses her around and makes her do who knows what. And so she tells Miri to go to her dad with a letter and the letter is asking for like child support and whatnot. So anyways, she says she doesn't want Mary anymore. Kazuki and Ray were gonna give Mary back to the mom, but once Kazuki saw how I guess reckless Misaki looks, like this was not a safe Lips. environment. Yeah. The way she's very her she has a very bad uh lifestyle and she hates Miri. Yeah, so he knew that that was not the right environment for Miri and decided that she's better off with them. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like, how bad was it the way Misaki lived? Are they going to reveal that? Are they going to reveal a little bit of Miri's life before she met Kosuke and Rei? Yeah, I'm curious about that. And the other character that they introduced in, uh, I want to say either episode one or two, was uh, Ogino. Ogino. Ogino, the big, the big, scary looking dude from who knows where. I think he's related to Ray. He could be his dad. Could be. Because, like, when they introduced him, Cube was kind of like, oh, crap. Yeah. I mean, he, they have a similar look. He, he's got that. RBF thing going on too. <laughs> oh, speaking of Ray, I just think it's really interesting how they introduced him. He looked like a total gamer that had no care for how he looked. 
he was grungy looking with a tracksuit on. And then you see him in action at work. He's super athletic. He's super. <laughs> like, He's a marksman. Yeah. And he can. Apparently he has great stamina. So I'm thinking, how does a gamer have great stamina? And then they show that he has like a workout area with a treadmill. And I'm like, yo, he is dedicated to his work, but he still loves to game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, and then, oh, speaking of gaming, there's that scene where Mary was there for the first day and she's causing chaos and she knocks down Ray's games. And I turned to Mikhail and I said, yo, if that happened with us, that would not fly with you. You'd be no. so mad, especially when the cases open up and the games fall out of their cases. Oh, yeah, that would not fly with me. And like, you did what now? <laughs> <laughs> and then Mary's like, sorry. He, 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 he. <laughs> you remember when they left her alone? They just <gasps> left her at the house by herself and they went out mm -hmm. and they came back and they thought, because the house is wrecked and they thought someone had broken in. Mm -hmm. And then that's when she's like, oh, hide and seek. And then she's like, Papa. And then she points the gun at him and he's like, oh, oh crap it. And then <laughs> Ray's like, you don't still it loaded. So. <laughs> and speaking of that there's also the scene the episode where they're trying to go on their mission their job and they were going to leave leave mary home and then as soon as they closed the door and mary knew they were gone she starts crying that totally made me think of our kid i was like yeah our child does that too when she thinks she's by herself she'll start crying <laughs> Oh, there were so many things that I was like, yeah, that happens. <laughs> and it's totally something like if you're a parent, you'll get a lot out of this as opposed to like Spy Family. Yeah. Like you'll really get the whole like, okay, yeah, I can relate to that. Oh, yeah, I've gone through that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my kid does that too. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like because there's no playbook on parenting. Nope. Like you're, you learn as you go. And through Kazuki and, and Ray, like you see how they're struggling, like in the sense of they had a routine uh -huh. before they had her. And in that, you know, the child is, is a complete disruptor. Our little knucklehead is that for us. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't have any sense of <laughs> like routine other than like when she eats, when she goes to sleep for a nap and when she goes to sleep at night. Like, she's a complete disruptor. And it's like, that's never really reflected in anime. Mm -mm. It's like, what it's like. Because they always have, well, this is the perfect little child. Like, no, they're little shits at times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really like Buddy Daddies. And I'm excited to see the rest of the season. Yeah. So, anything else for it? No. That's it? Yep. Yeah. So uh if you if you were to recommend this to someone, how would you describe it? I I've said to me I've already said it's spy family but funnier. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to explain it because I'm thinking of a scenario where I'm trying I'm explaining it to someone who hasn't seen Spy Family. So I would say it's about two assassins that take care of a little girl while trying to do their missions. And it's like, I know that's like a blah description, but if I'm trying to be short and sweet, that's how I would explain it. But if I'm going more details, it's like, like one, he he's like a house wife he totally take, takes care of them and then the other one he's anti-social and he grunts a lot but there's this cute little girl that opens up their hearts and brightens their lives <laughs> yeah it's i i think i would just best describe it as it's uh yeah even though it's called buddy daddies it's very much a buddy cop type of show uh I think back to you know late 80s early of the entire 90s and early 2000s when we had buddy cop movies and TV shows left and right. And you've always got that dynamic, the archetypical 
the he means well, but things go south for him character. And then he's got his polar opposite of the spectrum uh, cohort that's usually the no-nonsense, socially awkward character. Uh-huh. And then you've got the child who's the foil for both of them. And also, you've got the person who's like, who reigns both of them in being Q. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, if you look at it like that, you're like, okay, I get it. But um, it's good. I think it's really good. I think you guys would enjoy it if you watch it. Um, definitely let us know if you do watch it or if you read it because mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. is excellent. I think this is probably the sleeper show that I think is going to go under the radar for a lot of people. Because I don't think this is mainstream. It could catch on. It could. I hope it does catch on. I, th- I think it should. I mean, it, it's got... You look at this season, this season of anime, there's a lot that's come out. I mean, you got yeah. this, Revenger, you got... Um, there's a lot of variety this year. A lot of or isekai. season. A lot of isekai, though. Yeah, too. I mean, there's, there's always going to be a lot of East guys. <laughs> Expect five each season. <laughs> but there's some good isekai out this season, though. Yeah, yeah. Some, some really good isekai. I'm enjoying all three of the ones that I'm watching right now. Well, four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let us know what you guys thought about Buddy Daddies. If you've seen it, read it, let us know on your thoughts. If you haven't, let us know what you expect it like what was your first impression when you saw some of it and what did you expect from it uh you can let us know on all of social media platforms you can find me at lejos burfina and uh, we also upload our podcast as videos on youtube you can find it at lejos superfina and videos on spotify oh yeah yeah and uh, if you uh, want to follow me, I'm Mikhail Casanova. Find me across the board on all platforms. I also, outside of podcasting here, I do my own other two podcasts. So for gaming and then one for uh, interviews. So check me out. And yeah. <laughs> well, thank you all for listening. Keep watching anime. Keep reading manga. And keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one.